1.51 p.m. The sun is high and a warm wind curves over the hill. The tourist coaches arrive at regular intervals, bringing visitors from America, Yorkshire, Japan. They stream through the turnstile, buy rock cakes, pose for photographs, listen to audio guides clamped to their ears. Is it time, they ask, for an ice cream? They've come to see Stonehenge, the prehistoric monument in Wiltshire. Used as a burial site for centuries, his stones are believed to have been built around 2500 BC. This weekend, hundreds of people are expected to head to this patch of grass to celebrate the summer solstice, the point in the year when the Earth's axis tilts towards the sun. Around here, the land is rich and green and fertile. Its fields roll and tumble and curve like women do. There is a sense of summer rising, the air charged with that magic of summertime in Britain, birdsong chucking and bobbing and buffeting the breeze. By nine o'clock the light is fading, the sun going down over the wheat fields. Up on the hill, cars, camper vans, Land Rovers stop and pause, windows down, music playing. These are private moments, a lover's lane of sorts. The stones look small from up here, standing like distant strangers at a party. Across the smooth, warm expanse of wheat fields, the sky has turned pink and golden. The sun is a bloody yoke, dripping. It is hot wax melting. It is sinking and dipping into nothingness. The sky is ablaze now, aflame with red and orange, and far below the stones are ash, the day's cooling embers. The grass looks cooler, poorer now the gold is gone. The car radios jabber, and the lights of articulated lorries come blazing up the hill. A man climbs back into his car, rolls up the window, fires the ignition, and drives off down the gravel road. Above him, the sky holds a crescent moon, pale as a nail bed. <laughs>